Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to buy a domain name with GoDaddy. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the country and currency is set. Normally GoDaddy will work this out for you, but if it hasn't, then you can click on the country to choose your country and click on the currency to choose your currency. Once you've done that, come down to the search box and type in the domain that you want to buy. I'm choosing one that I already own so you can see what happens when it's not available. So type it in and hit search domain. Ah, oh, sorry, it's taken. So if you do still want to try and get hold of it, then you can click this link and you know it's gonna help you try and contact whoever owns it to buy it off them. But in general, if it's already an established site, they're probably not gonna want to sell it. It will give you a load of suggestions as well, like here are some alternatives, like different extensions that you could buy, or here are just some similar kind of names that you could buy. In general, I've never really found anything great down there. So let's pop in a domain that I know is available because I already checked before filming. We're gonna pop it in the box and hit search again. And hurrah, it's available and it's gonna give you the scary like buy it before someone else does. But I think I'm pretty safe with this domain. I don't think anyone's gonna be trying to buy this. GoDaddy tends to have a sale on, I mean, pretty much year round. So at the moment you get the first year for 99p, but you have to register for two years or more and every additional year is 1099. So make sure you just check what the conditions are for the sale. So I'm gonna hit select to add that to my cart. It's also gonna offer me the local extension. So this will probably be, you know, for your location, you may not be seeing .go.uk. And it's saying, you know, this is just a penny. Why don't you add it? But again, first year price, one penny, additional year, 7.99, and you have to register for two years or more. So this is gonna end up bumping up your price quite a bit. And in most cases, I don't think that you need to buy additional extensions for your domain but I will do another video on that so we don't get too off topic. It's offering you even more extensions here, and again, I still don't think that many of you will need those additional domain name extensions. So let's just stick with the one and go continue to cart. So now we have some new stuff, and it's automatically added privacy for us. Basically, if you don't have the privacy, your name, email address, home address and your telephone number are gonna be publicly available on the internet. And you know, for most people, you don't want that information publicly available online. It's, I'd say this is especially important if you are you know, a blogger or something like that where you're very much the face of whatever you're doing. If you get the privacy, then it's gonna fill that information in with this dummy information. So when people look online for who owns the domain, they're gonna get this instead of your details and obviously you know if someone's googling your name to look for your address then it's not going to come up in conjunction with that domain at all but it is entirely up to you if you don't want it you can just click on the drop down and say no thank you i don't want it they also offer a business protection which gives you some additional you know certified domain seal business registration creates an online business card in the who is I think that's overkill if you're running like a blog or something, maybe if you're running a business, then it's worth looking into. But I'm gonna stick with just basic privacy protection. Website builder and Linux web hosting, I like to keep my domains and my hosting separate. I will do a video on why you might want to do the same. So I'm gonna say no and no. And for an email that matches your domain, this is for people that are buying their domain name and they're not putting a website on there and not getting any kind of hosting. So it's like they just want the domain name so no one else can buy it and they want, you know, the fancy email. So if you're planning to actually have a website, then you don't need this email address that matches your domain because you will get that with your hosting in most cases. So we'll leave that as no thanks and hit continue to cart. This is where you're gonna kind of check everything and you know change anything you want to change. So first things first, make sure that your domain is spelt correctly, it's the domain you want and it has the extension that you want. If you want that privacy, make sure that that is selected. And you can choose how long you want to register this domain for. 
And it goes, you know, you can go for just a year, anywhere up to 10 years at a time. So there is a school of thought that the longer you register your domain for, it's going to give you kind of some kind of boost in search engines like Google. But Google did come out and kind of debunk that. But, you know, it, it's debatable how much it actually affects your search engine rankings. I would say that if you are very new, this is your first kind of blog or website, then I would go for two years so that you get the first year for 99p. Because for a lot of people that start blogs, they find that it's just not for them. If you're more kind of experienced, then you might want to go for a longer term. But, you know, it does, it bumps up the price quite a lot. We've gone from 20 quid to 70 quid. So it would be a shame to invest 70 quid in something if you end up, you know, giving up after six months. But of course, it's entirely down to you. It's going to, you know, try and convince us to get those domains. It's like, hey, keep the family together. Look, super, super good price. But still, I don't think that you need these extensions. It's also going to, you know, give you something where it's like, oh, we recommend this malware scanner. I have never seen something here that I've thought like, hey, yeah, I really need that. And I want to pay a monthly fee for it. So personally, I would, you know, take a look at what they're offering and maybe say no. Or maybe say yes, if you think it's useful for you. You can add another domain to your order, just pop it in the box, hit go and go through the same process to add it to the cart. And if you have a promotional code, then you can add it in this box. Hurrah, I get to save some money. So then once you're happy with everything, you're sure it's all set up how you want it, hit proceed to checkout. If you don't already have an account, you can hit create an account and it's going to do the basics, you know, email, username, password and a support pin. This is for if you have to contact the support department, they'll ask you for a pin number that which is this pin number. So obviously choose something that you're going to remember. I already have an account, so I'm just going to hit sign in. So now it's taking us to the place your order page. If you are going through the sign up process, then obviously you're going to have to enter, you know, all of your billing information and things like that. The important thing when you're doing this is this little bit here, use alternate domain registrant contact information. If you click on that, you're going to get this pop up box and you can select which domain you want to edit the domain registration contact information for, or you can just say do it for everything that I'm buying right now. But basically it means, let's say that someone else is buying this domain for you. So you would put their information in the billing tab. If you had a friend who is particularly technical that, you know, agrees to be the technical contact for the domain, then you could put their information in there. For the administrator, which is like the boss account of this domain, you probably want your own information in there. And for the registrant, that is whoever the domain is registered to. It's like the birth certificate for this domain, like whoever is going to be the mother or father of this domain, that's where their details should go. If this is your blog, you absolutely want this domain registered in your name. So I'm going to cancel out because sadly no one is buying this for me. And then choose your preferred payment method. If you go credit debit card, obviously you need to stick those details in. If you're going PayPal, it will shoot you off to the PayPal site to kind of do all this stuff. So once you're happy with all of that, hit place your order. And that is it. You are now the proud owner of that domain name. It will send your order details to the email address that you put. And, you know, it's going to offer you more stuff. They love the upsell. So they're like, oh, next step, get a website. We're going to ignore that, or at least I am. So then you can either go and manage your domain, update those name servers to point to your hosting, whatever you want to do. Or you can print your receipt or, you know, save it as a PDF, which I like to do just for my files so that everything is in one place. So that's it, guys. Congratulations. You now have a shiny new domain name to do whatever your heart desires with. I hope this video was helpful guys and I will see you in the next one where we're probably going to point the domain name servers.